Day two of the early morning sessions. Wasn't off to the best of starts this morning. Left a little bit later. Last night went to bed later. In bed by 10 to 11 and fell asleep within six minutes, which is quite cool, but just an unsettled night. Just couldn't sleep very well. But wake up was easy, but I was kind of somewhat awake around four. I just waited for my alarm and then put my headphone in got my motivation on straight away, just make that my first point of call. And then I was on into getting up and getting myself together, but it just took longer, everything was a bit slower this morning. Um, I felt a bit clumsier in the morning. Obviously I gotta be very careful that I don't wake Ezra, which is it's hard. So it's like a, a tired Mission Impossible mission. It's not fun. So yeah, not the best of starts, but we're here, we've made it to the gym. I'll go inside, have some breakfast again, and then get into a session. Day two, let's get in the gym. I'll try and film a bit of workout and throw it into the video as well. So, let's go. by making sure I got my warm up sets in and just started when I felt ready rather than going, okay, I've done one, I've done two warm up sets or pyramid of that. But it went when I felt my hamstrings were best engaged, no, no cramp. It felt like it wanted to before I started on the right side, but then nothing in the end. So that was that. And then, yeah, into the working set, I hit 12 reps, pushed myself, kept to a good tempo, failed at right points and when I felt like I was failing at a particular tempo, I tried to then speed, increase the speed of the movement, which allowed me to get a couple extra reps out. Then I hit complete failure again within the same set. And then from there, I went straight to drop sets. Overload, 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 until, it's, until I feel like I can't really do any more physically. When the weight gets too light, and I don't want to do too many drops. And then from there, I'm done. So hamstrings and feeding it, literally one good set. Like I said, warm up sets don't really have much of a bearing and impact, but one good set with the reps that you need. It feels like I've done you know, GPT on the way exercise. Come up, bring the hips under, keep that core nice and tight. There we go, keep that slight rounding. But one of the things I'm noticing, and I always notice this initially when I'm starting off doing early mornings, especially because I'm not getting the good sleep that I'd like to be getting, but we'll work on that, is I start to feel like uh, kind of ill. So throat gets a little bit closed up. Let's kind of relate back to sleep. Maybe I snored a few too many times last night. But my throat starts to feel like it's closing up and it doesn't feel good. But throughout the day, it goes back to normal and it doesn't carry over. Definitely have to monitor that, increase my vitamins as much as I can to try and combat that. And um, But sleep is definitely the key factor. Uh, at the moment, getting about just short of six hours of sleep, and that's not ideal. So I'm gonna have to try and figure out a way to get an extra bit of sleep in, otherwise this might not work out too well. Or for failing that. So I was having a discussion with someone in the gym a couple of days ago and we were talking about their shift patterns and how their work routine can really ruin their sleep. They can't get the eight hours that you should be getting. 
So, and I have a few clients that have problems with sleep when it, and it's a struggle for them. And, but realistically, they actually can't get to that point where they can have solid sleep because of work, because of lifestyle commitments, whatever it is. So the other strategies that you have is one, you count up how many nights you could get eight hours and you try and adhere to those. So your body is quite forgiving and it allows you to have these moments where it recovers and where it can do the jobs it needs to do. If you, if you were to kind of go, okay, I can't get eight hours every night. It's just unrealistic for me. But what I can do is on the nights where I can get eight hours, you focus on getting those eight hours and you make that a bit of a, a mission and a goal for yourself. And then if things change or circumstances change, then you can increase the amount of eight hours sleeps that you're getting. You cut a month or a year and you go, right, well, in a month, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, always can get eight hours. I can get eight hours, I can go to bed a bit later, but I can still wake up at 8 a.m. in the morning if I go to bed at 12. And I can focus on how I get good restful sleep. So, and it's not about increasing the extra hours to make up for what you didn't get in a week, because all you do is make yourself more tired. But you're just looking at getting quality segments of sleep to help you out. And on the days that you can't get your full eight hours together, you could potentially operate like a baby. So you can introduce naps. You can go and nap for 30 minutes, an hour slot, if you can make that work into your day any better. Or if you can't do that, then you work on stress management and recovery methods. So you do as many things as you are capable of doing to aid recovery and to aid the reduction of stress. So one of the things that I'm trying to stick to at the moment is small sporadic bouts of grounding. Um, something I wanna look into more actually and just make sure that the research is definitely there to support it. But equally, I'm a guy of equal opportunities and fairness to certain claims, not all, but here's my, here's my philosophy. Science is doing a great job of figuring out things that we potentially already might know, but it's confirming them and then it's, dis it's dismantling things that are false. So there's certain things, you know, you've got your Chinese herb medicine strategies, you've got things like yoga, you've got things that have worked for time, movement works, um, being barefoot, being in nature, it works, but we can't explain why it works. So we just go with it through faith. But then, so I believe if you have something that you think could be of benefit to you that's not going to have a negative impact on your life, I don't see any potential reason why you can't utilise that, that thing, even if it only is actually a placebo. We all know the power of a placebo, the sugar pill. So we know that a placebo, just believing that something can work, can actually have a positive effect on your physiological state. So therefore, to disprove that nothing works or things that are boldly claimed don't work isn't necessarily true. All it means is that science hasn't been able to conduct enough studies, enough cross-reference studies, enough people to contribute into studies and enough variety and selection of people to, to actually study. So, and it's gonna take science a long, long time to catch up to certain things. So for now, you just work with the science that is there and definite and then you have these like grey area things that you think okay sounds a bit out there but does it impact me negatively no it's actually going to be potentially positive it doesn't increase any more stress it doesn't increase any any it has no negative reasons why you shouldn't do it or shouldn't attempt it it's not taking any too much more of your time out of your day if you can say those things in the grey area things then I feel that it's okay to try those things out and come in with a mindset that it can work and then you might get the benefits. If it's a waste of time for you, don't do it. If it's been disproven through science, probably don't do it. That's my thing. So yeah, I've been using grounding basically. Um, I go outside barefoot. So, and my opportunities are very slim. So if I'm like right, I'm hanging out the washing, I'll go outside. Obviously like today, crappy weather, it's raining. So I would probably gonna do washing, but if I'm taking out the bins, if I'm going to the car, I try and do it all barefoot, just so I get that little bit of exposure. And 
the thing is it feels really nice it feels really refreshing to have that level of contact with the grass and the, the dirt because obviously we've got our little raised flower bed so picking the raspberries just those little encounters with nature that you don't actually have like think how often you're protected you're in your coats you're in your hats and especially at this time of the year you've got your trainers on with rubber soles with socks inside socks cramped your feet crammed into a shape that's not probably potentially beneficial or helpful for it it's actually designed for sporting performance but not for health performance so they're all little things and tips and tricks you can use you can find many many ways that can help reduce with the reduction of stress working out can have that benefit but only certain types of workouts so i remember talking to a guy in the gym who is a yoga instructor and he explained working out in two methods within yoga they like to have your ice and your fire fire is when you do things that essentially kind of burn so in yoga you have you have the type of yoga where you're doing your balance techniques you're doing holds and your muscles can begin to ache and shake and it burns and you get that lactic acid build up and on the flip side you're doing things where you're focusing with ice focusing on breath work focusing on complete deep relaxation and before above all those other things that i mentioned earlier breathing is so vitally important you don't breathe properly i don't breathe properly like how often do you breathe deeply breathe in nice and deep through your nose take it up so you can completely expand the rib cage expand the belly let that diaphragm drop and then let everything back out and you do that for a period of time and you'll be surprised how much more you feel relaxed and how much more you reduce that level of tension that's around your body so that's things that can be utilized by myself if i'm in a situation where i can't get those restful sleeps as much as i'd like to um, and it's something I would recommend to clients and to other people that are trying this out. Can you get that in? So today has been a bit more of a working day. Like I said, I'm a little bit quieter lately, so it gives me a chance to change and switch things up. Days when I have a late finish. So this will be a true test of what the morning sessions are doing to me and how I'm feeling. This morning's workout, if you would have seen, involved deadlifts, which is a super taxing exercise, and I want to keep them in. Yeah, I felt really good with those, but the way they can make me feel taxed is something. The other thing I'm noticing today um, is just that I feel a little bit more like ill. First thing when I woke up, my throat just felt like a little bit, you know, when you get that little bit of, oh, something's about to come and hit you. I got a little bit of that this morning. so. I felt that maybe that might start to creep in, but that's gonna come down to, for me, increasing my sleep time and increasing my food consumption to match up with my activity levels and demand. I think when I'm under fueled, but when I don't put enough good nutrients, well-rounded nutrients into my body, I start to feel it and I start to get, um, you know, kind of those ill symptoms before anything kicks in. So if I can nip that in the bud, then we should be all good. It's the other thing that I felt like today. So, yeah, no, I had a good training session. It was about an hour. Um, I didn't have to rush as such. And then through the rest of the day, I've obviously been, been able to be creative and edit and respond and everything like that. So it's been a good time to relax. But when I do get busy again, it's going to be something I have to factor in. I might need to seek other methods to help me feel better through the day if I struggle to get into a longer sleep routine, just because it's not really feasible. It's either stop waking up early in the morning or stop training clients late in the evening, both of which can't be done. I mean, the, the stop mornings could happen, but then it means my training gets pushed to another part of the day, which is what I'm trying to avoid. And cutting off clients earlier can happen, but I it's not going to help me out in future and there's certain clients that just love the late evening session if i was doing nine to ten like i used to they'd be all over it so it's um it's not something that i'm willing to give up very easily i'd have to be for a very good reason i'd have to feel like i'm in a secure position with my with my uh, job and income to feel ready to sacrifice that time so there are two things that just can't compete and i'm pretty sure there's a lot of you guys that are in a similar position whether you work shift patterns whether you are uh, again, a business owner and you work very late hours uh, and you struggle to have the, the ability to choose to cut the time off. 
So you have to you have to seek alternative methods. Unfortunately, that's just society. That's just how we live. That's how we operate. Um, to be able to live happy on one end, you have to sacrifice certain things on another end, and it's just finding that balance where you're happy with it. Um, can't make everyone happy. You can't please every aspect that you'd like to be pleased with, but you can find balance that you can be happy with some choices, and then make a decision to sacrifice or compromise with other choices. So that's good. But yeah, other than that, I'm good. Tomorrow is technically a rest day. So my current training pattern for now will be Tuesdays, Wednesdays in the morning, Thursdays a rest day off, and then Friday mornings back into training. And then I can pick between a Saturday and a set or a Sunday as to when I get the next session in. So it gives me a bit of flexibility on the weekend. Um, weekends can be tricky, but I think typically if I'm up, early enough and I do want to stay within the routine of getting up early just maybe not getting up at 4 30 every morning but definitely want to not be getting up too much later so I might get up at five in the morning so I'm still within that window of time and then I'm still pushing to get to bed earlier on the nights as well that helped me out massively so I'm going to head back into the gym shortly PT my clients get there the results and one of the things I was worried about is feeling like I'm lacking energy. I've just all, I've, I've liked the idea of being able to perform and do things that I'd like to do without having going down the route of having something supplement how I feel and how I respond and how I act. So there's that. Or well, there's also matcha though. That's something I can get into. Yeah, it was, it was nice actually. Like it had no jittery feel. It just felt switched on, calm and good. So maybe I'll go down the matcha route or potentially the green tea route that's something that can happen too yeah don't like coffee but like green tea strange me just feels healthy i guess like that's my mindset i think green health it's all good it's not true it's not how it works that's today over with at least for you guys with the vlog side of things don't think i'll film late tonight because that's just too much to do i'll edit this and then tomorrow like i said is rest day and then I'll be looking after Ezra again in that day too. So maybe we'll capture some little moments from that just as a day in the life of being a dad. But until then, see you soon. This morning I'm not at the gym, am I? So today's a rest day. Decided to wake up early and it allowed me to get some work done. But I didn't want to leave the house and it's nice to wake up to this little one. Go on and show me your best slide. Can you go as fast as your hat did? <laughs> So this is the day following after my first two morning sessions and um, today I do feel a little bit more ill than I said I was feeling in the last video. Daddy. Yes, is it? What's wrong? Cheese. Cheese. So yeah, I feel a little bit more ill but I actually don't think that's down to the early morning sessions. Um, I think initially I felt ill from the early morning sessions or like just like something was coming but today I'm just starting to get a little bit more worn out but I did have my COVID-19 vaccine yesterday my second dose yeah whatever um, so I got my second my second vaccine my second dose and I felt all right from it to be fair and I think I still feel pretty okay like I'm not like really sick I just feel a bit off that's all so time will tell we'll see what happens throughout the course of today and then what happens tomorrow it's likely that by tomorrow I probably feel fine but I do have another early morning session um, now based off some advice my mum has kind of looked into from a doctor she follows I'm a bit skeptical on doctors but this doctor seems pretty genuine likes to study the research around vaccinations specifically to do with COVID-19 and he was very early to discuss 
the benefits of vitamin D supplementation to help combat with COVID-19 um, effects. So I like his approach um, and it was fair warning. So basically the idea is, or the, the warning was to, if you're into weight training, I think it was more weight training, is to not weight train for around four days after you've had your vaccination. Um, but I can't exactly remember the reason. So what I'm going to do, I can't really not go into the gym early because that will mess up my schedule and it will it won't throw me off, but I, it, it's not what I want to be doing. So the idea is that tomorrow I will get up at normal time. I'll go to the gym normal time. I will probably just train other body parts and just avoid training arms. So um, obviously if you've seen a lot of my training workout videos, I like to work with uh, cuffs, um, but yeah. For the longest time I've always trained with cuffs so if I've had clients that have been injured I've looked at other alternative ways to utilise cuffs to still get in a good quality session and myself is no different. So what I'll do is I will probably, if I do upper body I'll do isolation based exercises and movements, avoid around the shoulder movements and then probably do more legs and abs. Um, See, I don't, as much as it may say not to weight train for four days, my thoughts are that if, if your blood is going to be pumping anyway, weight training shouldn't have too much of a dramatic impact on that. Um, yes, your body, when you're contracting muscles, will need to send blood faster to certain areas. But if I'm avoiding training and fatiguing out kind of muscles around my arms, then those blood vessels shouldn't have too much of an impact into my session. And whatever the potential downfall was of weight training soon after COVID va vaccination won't really play its part. So that's the goal, that's the plan. We won't, we won't be put off by this basically. But yeah, I just thought I'd let you guys know how I'm feeling and um, we kick on. We'll see what next week feels like. I feel like my body just needs to adjust to it. So once we've got that adjustment, things will be good. Don't Izzy? Yeah.